Hello, everyone, and welcome to the class. We are live right now. We have uh, over 800 people signed up for today's class just through GoToMeeting. We have another several hundred tuning in live right now through YouTube. We are talking today all about how to clean and protect your Mac. This video, this class rather, is going to be broken into two different segments. We're going to start with the part about protecting your Mac, and then we're going to move on to cleaning your Mac, meaning just making a little bit of extra space so that you have uh, more availability for your actual files instead of that stuff that you don't even think about that takes up space. So before we went, uh, before we started recording, I asked the live audience here a question about antivirus software. Does a Mac need antivirus software? So let me try to give you the, the basic answer. The one thing that seems to affect Macs and is not uncommon is something that is not dangerous. It's referred to as adware. And for those of you who've gotten to know me over the years of doing these classes, you know I'm a big fan of metaphors. I'm going to use a metaphor right now. Some people, um, I don't want it to come off as offensive. I'm trying to just give you an idea of how to picture this. Calling adware a virus is a little bit like calling a common cold cancer. These are two completely different animals. Adware is not harmful to your computer. And I saw one person, at least in the chat, already give me an indication that they may have it. Examples of adware, um, I'll give you the symptoms. How's that? Can be that you get these random pop-ups. You might see ads on websites where there shouldn't be ads. It might be that you go to one website, you're redirected to a different website. It might be that you go to Google and you're brought to a website that looks a little bit like Google, but that ain't Google. Um, those are just some examples. It can also change your homepage. That's another one I wanted to mention. So in that case, there are a couple of, there's really just two very, very simple pieces of software. Both are free that I tend to recommend to all of my clients. Now, for those of you who are not live right now, I want to make a very strong recommendation to you. Any single, Anytime I recommend a piece of software, I always give you a link in the description of this video. The reason for that is with many of these products, if you try to Google them, a lot of what you're going to find is a fake version of the software. It's actually adware. Ironic, huh? So please, please use the links that I provide to you. Here we go. First one here is actually made by a friend of mine. His name is Thomas Reed, smart dude. He's the owner of a great little blog called The Safe Mac. And he created a piece of software called Adware Medic. The direct link is adwaremedic.com. And all you do is click download. It's a very, very lightweight, lightweight piece of software. It goes into your downloads folder. Let's see, I have a little shortcut to mine right here. Open it up, okay. And it's going to just simply ask you to drag it into the applications folder, like so. Whenever you see, by the way, a screen like this, what it wants you to do is take this icon and drag it and drop it here. I already have it, so I'm going to just let it sit there. And let's go into it so you can just see what it looks like. Add where? Medic. Very, very lightweight piece of software. Oop, looks like I have an update to run. I'll, uh, I'll do that later since we have a bunch of people here live right now. All you have to do is hit scan for adware. It'll search your whole system. It only takes a few seconds to run. Um, in my case, because I am live right now and I'm doing quite a few things at the same time, it may take a little bit longer. But it'll just scan through your system, see if it detects anything running in the background. Uh, and if it does, it'll just give you the opportunity with one click to remove it. The one thing I want to mention about this software is if it does find anything, you need to empty your trash and then restart your computer. And then go one further step. When you restart your computer, look once again at the trash. You may need to empty it a second time because if it's running at the time and you try to trash it, it won't run. Or it won't, it won't, sorry, it won't let you empty the trash. So just be very careful about that. But this is a great piece of software. It's free. Um, some of my buddies at Apple, I know the people at Apple Care, they even recommend this uh, to their folks. There you go. Happy news. No adware on my computer. Now, the other one, I have to be very, very careful how I f talk about this piece of software. Some of you know how deep this rabbit hole goes. Others may not, so just listen to me. So the other piece of software is called Detect X, okay? And Detect X is made by a company called Squark. Hold on. I like to say it my way. Squark! That's how I pretend that it's pronounced. They have a bunch of different pieces of software they make. The one that we're talking about is this one right here, Detect X. 
Okay. Now, DetectX, what it does is it looks for a piece, a type of software that I have personally come to refer to, and I don't think this is real, a real term, but I've come to refer to it as peskyware. It's not a virus. It's not technically adware. It's something in the middle. Okay. So what this will do is it'll look for pesky software. One of them you can actually maybe make out on your screen right now. For those of you who are watching after the fact, I actually have to blur it out, believe it or not. That's, yeah, welcome to my world. So DetectX, very, very lightweight piece of software. This is what it looks like. My piece of advice is that you click on this little uh, drop-down menu, go to the last option, which is all searches, and hit search. It'll once again scan your computer for these different types of Pescuware, and I want to make it clear that these are pieces of software that the people at Squirk have identified as being um, what I would call less than bueno. Not good. So it'll show you where they are, allow you to trash the files. Once again, with these types of software, you usually have to try to empty your trash, reboot your computer, and then empty it again. And if you ever go to empty your trash and it says it can't empty, it's just really a sign that you need to restart your computer because it's trying to run at that moment in the background and it won't allow you to trash it while that's going on. So that's it. Um, in regards to antivirus software, um, I want to just encourage you all to just ignore the comments in this case uh, in the video when this is published online because there's going to be a bunch of people out there who will disagree with me and I, you know, they don't have to show their credentials. To, to talk about this stuff. Is it possible for a Mac to get a virus? Yes, anything is possible. I could grow wings and fly away, which some of you may say is slightly more possible than you might think. But the point is, is that it is ridiculously unlikely. Um, in my entire professional career, working with as many people as I work with, and it's just, trust me, it's a big number, um, I have encountered a total of three viruses ever. The first two were uh, viruses that were actually identified by Apple, and all you had to do to remove it was literally to run software update. So back in the day, it was Apple icon software update. Now you go to the App Store and hit update. And for many of you, that's all just done automatically. Those people had not done their updates in ages, and that's the reason why they got it. As soon as I ran that, it was removed back to normal. The third case was someone who was running Windows on a Mac. There are two different ways you can run Windows on a Mac. You can do it through virtualization software, such as Parallels. That's one version. There's a few others that are out there. That's just always been the one that I've always used. And, uh, and what happened was this virus had infected the Windows portion, and the settings were such that the Windows side had access to the Mac file. Some of you may have remembered uh, a virus that was in the news called CryptoLocker. That's what it was. So it encrypted the data on the Mac. It was a total loss for this person. So my advice is that if you do run Windows on your Mac, just please get really good antivirus software. Um, there's a few different ones that are out there. I've, I've changed what I've recommended over the years. Malwarebytes has always been on that list. Paid version, not the free version. By the way, if you uh, do that, if that describes you, I will include a link in the description of this video to an unlimited license for Malwarebytes, meaning as they upgrade to new versions, you'll just automatically get it for free. So check that out for those of you for whom it applies. Um, if you have purchased antivirus software for your Mac, this is a tough one for me to, to talk about. Be very careful. In fact, you may even want to call Apple and ask them their opinion. I can't give you my opinion because <laughs> I have a tendency to get sued when that happens. Um, be very careful, okay, because some companies out there are not so legit. And if you gave them a credit card, you might want to watch that credit card. That's all I'm saying. Of course, the other thing you can do to protect your Mac is please, please, please back up your Mac through Time Machine. We have a whole class on Time Machine. Link to that in the description. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about cleaning your Mac. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is bring up an application and I want to make an acknowledgement that it is not perfect. Okay. It doesn't work for everything out there, but it's still pretty good. And I thought I had it preloaded and I didn't. So give me one second. This is definitely one of those pieces of software. If you Google it, most of what you're going to find is fake. So please use that damn link. FreeMacSoft is the name of the company. The name of the app is called App Cleaner. And what it basically does, very lightweight, once again, it's free, is, let me launch it. There we go. This is what it looks like, okay? 
you have applications, widgets, and others, go into applications, and hey, there's all of your apps in your Mac. So let's say one day I want to remove Abbey Fine Reader Express. I can click the little check mark next to it, hit search. It's going to find all those little hidden library files. Now, it doesn't always find every single library file I've noticed, uh, especially with pieces of software that might cross over into that pesky where. That's why I brought that up first, by the way. So if you have a piece of software that you're trying to remove, do the detect X first if, it's, if you think it might be malicious, and then come here. And then just simply hit delete, and voila, it's gone. It's a really, really easy way to do it. Uh, also, I want to mention, if you see any of these icons and there's a strike through it, you know, like the, the universal symbol for no, like no smoking, it's a circle with a line through it, that's an indication that it is no longer supported. Um, so it's legacy software, it's fine to delete it because it won't run anyway. That's another good thing to clear out space on your Mac. Widgets, okay? <laughs> Widgets were really popular about 10 years ago. Eh, not so much these days. Widgets are these guys, okay? So, you know, some of them are kind of handy, like weather, and that's about it. Um, I find that this, this weather one here that we used to recommend, it, it works about maybe 10% of the time. There was a movie widget that, once again, almost never, ever works. These do not take up a significant amount of space, so if you want, you can delete them, especially if you're really critical on space. Just check all the boxes, hit search, and once again, it'll delete them. Then we have others here, okay? Be very careful with this. You, If you decide to go into this section here, you either want to have someone who's an expert with you, maybe even if you go to the Apple Store, have them check this out. Um, these are all the little plugins that just run on your computer. Um, so you might have a few that are old that are just kind of hanging out. Once again, these do not take up significant space, but you can use this to clear them out. So let's hit cancel on that one for now. Next thing I want to do is go over, this is something that we talked about at the Wednesday class, and I said to everyone, hold off, I've noticed something a little bit different. I need to investigate here and see what's going on. Before the live class, uh, before we started recording today, I asked you all a question about duplicates. Do you have problems with duplicates? There's two different pieces of software. Both of these are paid, okay? But the first one um, is really, really good for photos. So there's this company, we've talked about them before, called Fat Cat Software. The reason why I told everyone to hold off is they've introduced a second application. They have iPhoto Library Manager, which I can now confirm is really just for iPhoto. And then we have Power Photos, which is for the new version, okay? Um, Power Photos is a little bit different. Um, let me pull it up real quick. Oops, I thought I had it on this side. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to actually create a little short tutorial video for you. But Power Photos, what it does is it allows you to search through your photos library and it will identify duplicates. The one thing that's a little bit weird is it adds a tag to your photos that are duplicates so that you have to then go into photos and delete them. So please, if this is something that concerns you, I will at this point say that if, you're, if you've started using the Photos app, this is a good piece of software. I will do a short little video, it won't even be probably five minutes long, that will show you how to do this because there are definitely tricks to it. Um, but for those of you who have duplicates or there's a second thing, if you have multiple photo libraries, back in the day when that used to be considered a good thing, this is very good for merging those all into one library. So check that out. I think it's around, I want to say $25 or so, but it's not a bad piece of software. Next one is a trick I want to show you, uh, and this applies to your Mac, but it also applies to your iPhone and iPad. And uh, this is sort of uh, one portion of an upcoming class that we have on how to remove what is referred to as other data on an iPhone or iPad. So other data refers to basically anything that's not an app and or photos or video. One of the things a lot of people never even think about that can take up a lot of space is iMessages. Think about it. When you're done with an email, what do you do? You hit delete, right? When you get a voicemail and you've listened to it, what do you do? You hit delete. What happens when you get an iMessage or a text message? Well, most people don't delete it. They just let it kind of you know, slip away, and when that person contacts you again, the old conversation comes back to life. So one of the things, especially for those of you who do a lot of texting with video or photos, is to clear out messages. And there is a trick here I want to share with you. So if you hit the delete key, it's going to give you this screen that's going to say, are you sure you want to delete? Okay, well, there's a little bit of a problem with that, okay? You're going to have to go through that for every single one. 
kind of a pain in the butt. So here's the trick. If on your keyboard you go through this list and you hit Command and add the Option key and then tap Delete, it just immediately deletes it. So you can go through a giant list of iMessages very, very quickly. Cool, right? Ah, next one we have here is I want to give you a few tricks in regards to disk utility. Now part of this I have to kind of describe to you because I can't actually do it live. So I'm going to do the best that I can and of course for whatever reason these search results are not popping up. So disk utility runs best when you're not logged into your user account. So for those of you who are taking notes this might be a good thing to jot down. So for me personally, every few months or so, I go through this process, and what I do is when you go to boot up your Mac, okay, uh, what you can do is you can hold down um, Command-R, and Command-R is the recovery partition, and within that, there's a few different things that you can do. You can actually reinstall the operating system, and a lot of people find that when they do that, they actually get a lot of space back. Um, and don't worry, when you reinstall the operating system through that method, you do not lose data, okay? It's, it's saving all of your data, it's just refreshing the operating system. So there's a lot of stuff there that inevitably gets cleared out. You can usually get back at least a few gigabytes of space. The other thing, though, that you can do from that screen is you can run disk utility. So in that case, you'd see a screen that looks just like this. You click on the Macintosh hard drive that is indented, not the top one. Hit Verify Disk. That'll take maybe a minute to run or so, depending on how much stuff you've got, and then hit repair, okay? Just do that every few months, you're good to go. The other thing that's a good idea is some people like to leave their Mac on all the time and just let it sleep, and other people shut it down. For those of you who are curious, I actually usually leave my Mac on pretty much all the time, and I just sleep it, you know, overnight. But it is a good idea every couple weeks to restart it. And the reason why is there's certain cache files that will not clear out unless you actually do that. Again, you're not going to get back a ton of space, but you will get back a little bit. By the way, one little thing, um, just for my own curiosity, is if you decide to do these various tricks, take a look at how much space you have right now, and take a look at how much space you have when you're done. You can put it in the comments section, just kind of a fun little thing for us to be aware of. Uh, the next is uh, two different locations within your Mac uh, that can hold some fairly big sized data. Um, I don't believe I can show you all of this here because of how this account is set up. So forgive me, I'm just going to have to verbalize it with you. And I'll put it, of course, in the notes section. So when you're clicked on your desktop, you know how it says Finder up here at the top left? We also have this button here called Go. There's a location here that is hidden that you can only reveal when you hold down the Option key. So look at here where it says Home. When I hold the Option key, it reveals the library folder. You're going to go into that. Within the library folder, there's two different folders that can contain files that take up a good sized amount of space, especially for those of you who have migrated from computer to computer to computer. From here, you're going to go into Application Support. There's two different locations in here, and I'm just going to uh, verbally tell you. Mobile Sync is one of them, and Sync Services is the other. Um, basically, it has to do a lot with... Um, if you've had, this is at least what I found. Um, I've had iPhones over the years, and I had backup files of those phones that were in those folders. So just go through them. Don't delete the actual root folder. Just delete the contents, okay? And just, of course, make sure that your phone is backing up to the cloud as opposed to your computer. But that is another uh, big way to get back a good chunk of space. Um, I'm going to skip over the next one that I had because I just think it could... Uh, negatively affects some people who end up using software later on. Uh, the answer is you can actually go into the Macintosh hard drive, go into the library and clean out the Apple loops. Those are the audio files that are part of GarageBand. Um, so I'll put a link to the, I'll put the location of those uh, in the description. Just be careful because if you ever go back, you know, they're gone. Next one um, isn't so much clean your Mac, it's more about getting your Mac to start up faster. And uh, there's a couple different things about this. Go to the Apple icon, top left of your computer, System Preferences, second item down. From here, we're going to go to Users and Groups, okay, bottom left corner. At this point, you're going to want to be clicked on your account, 
and we have this little thing here for login items. So these are pieces of software that are launching automatically when you go to turn on your computer. Okay, so you can see here, um, those are two that I do recommend, uh, Dropbox, if you use Dropbox. I'm a big, big, big fan of Alfred. Um, Alfred's like sort of a hybrid between uh, Siri, points by the way, I said Siri, not Surrey, those of you who criticize me on YouTube. It's where my Boston accent comes back from the grave. Uh, and also Spotlight. It's a really kind of a happy medium. Um, but those both I want to have run right away when my computer starts up. If there's other stuff that you see here that you don't want running, just click on it and hit the minus symbol right here. The other thing I want to note about this, because I've heard this from people over the years, is some people will say, why is it when I turn on my Mac that like, you know, Skype starts right off the bat? Uh, here's a little trick for you. I know this is slightly off topic. Um, so let's just pretend that Safari is doing that for me since it's open. What you can do this is this. Click and hold on the icon. You get this little pop-up right here. You can go to options, and there's this thing right here. It says open at login. So if I was having that symptom where it automatically launches, it's probably because that is checked. Just click it again, and it won't happen in the future. Skype is the big violator of that one. I don't know how they got around that one. Um, the other one, I'm actually going to go slightly off topic from my notes here um, and go over something that a bunch of you, only, well, thankfully, uh, let me go to the poll results here. I asked a question before we began regarding File Vault, and I asked everyone who's here live how many people uh, use File Vault, and 5% said yes, 23% said no, and 72% said they have no idea what File Vault is. This is a really important one. Please tell your friends about this one. And by the way, we just created a short video, uh, as we're calling it a shorty, showing you how to do exactly this. So File Vault is this feature on the Mac where it will encrypt all of your data. And uh, it's, it's a very controversial topic because recently Apple made this a default option, as in they made it you say yes, whereas in the entire past, it's always been no. And this is one of those things that drives me batty because, in my own opinion, I think it's a bad thing for most people, not everyone. Okay, company CEOs, if you're if you're you know celebrity, borderline celebrity, if you're in government, um, I made a joke in the video saying, hey, if you're Hillary Clinton, yeah, use it. If you're not, um, don't. When you're in system preferences, go to security and privacy. Okay, from here, it's right here. It's the second tab, and I know this might go against what you might think you want it to say turn on because if it says turn on that would imply that it is currently turned off the reason why this is dangerous okay there's a few different reasons first of all encrypting your data will make everything take up more space than it actually does so if you just simply turn it off if you have it enabled you're going to get back a ton of space you'll also notice that your computer starts up way way faster um, and please understand, if you turn, if you do have to disable this feature, it takes hours, like six to ten hours sometimes. Um, the bigger reason, though, why this is dangerous is that if you ever forget the administrator password to your computer, you're screwed. That's not. I'm not trying to be cute and fancy. You're literally, you're just screwed because you're not going to be able to get that data back. Not even the Apple Store can get that data back. Um, and part of the reason why I'm mentioning this is if you do a system software update, meaning one of those you know updates where it makes you restart your computer, this is one of those screens, and by default it's turned on. You have to be the one to turn it off. Mm, this will be on my list of things to bring up with Mr. Tim Cook when we sit down and have a beer, once again, in 2000 and probably never. Uh, okay, that's File Vault. My opinion, turn it off. Next thing we're talking about, uh, I want to remind you all of something. It's not as important now because I know a lot of you have switched over and started using the Photos app. Um, but for those of you who still use iPhotos, okay, you need to remember that these photo programs have their own trash, meaning they need to be emptied. It's a little bit different with Photos because it will clear out automatically after 30 days. In Photos, you go to File and you go to show recently deleted. Okay, thankfully I have nothing here right now, but what you can do is hit the little delete all button that you'll see here at the top right corner of my screen, and that'll just wipe it out. If you're in iPhoto, let me go back into that. iPhoto has an actual trash can, okay, and that doesn't clear out. 
and that you will find right here on the left hand side. So just go into it. There's a empty trash button at the top right corner. So just make sure you do that, especially if you're doing, you know, a little spring cleaning to your photo situation. Ah, <sighs> that's that. Um, I don't know how many people here use Dropbox, but I want to mention a great trick to um, help you for those of you who do. And uh, this was actually in the class that we just did on Dropbox. So if you use Dropbox on your Mac, you'll notice that you have like a little icon for it up here at the top right corner of your Mac. You're going to want to go into it and go to the little gear icon down here at the bottom right corner. Go into Preferences, Account, Change Settings right here under Selective Sync. So what Selective Sync does is these are folders that I have stored in Dropbox, but if you uncheck these boxes, it's going to take it off this user account. And one thing I'd like to remind you all, and Mark Collier, I know you're guilty of this, if you have multiple accounts on your Mac and you sign into Dropbox on each account, it's downloading everything twice because it's in the users folder, not the system folder. So that's something to keep in mind. So the reason why I have so many of these right now unchecked is because on my personal account, I have everything, right? But on this account that I use just for teaching, eh, I only need these couple little folders. Everything else I uncheck, it takes it off the computer. It's still stored in the cloud. It's just not on the computer. This is also a really good idea to do if you choose to back up all of your photos as a secondary backup to Dropbox, okay? So what you could do is, for example, create a folder, drag in your whole photo library, go into Selective Sync and uncheck that folder. So if anything happens to your computer, you can still get it all back. But you don't have to worry about that backup also being local. Because after all, what's the point of a local backup? It's not backing it up. So that's that. Next thing we're going over today here is um, downloads folder. So uh, a lot of people download a lot of stuff over time. When you open up Finder, you should see a little thing here for downloads. If you don't, you're going to just have to go into Finder, go into Preferences, and just add it back. So within your downloads folder, this is the kind of thing you want to look for. Files that end in .dmg, other examples could be uh, zip. It's more of a PC thing these days, but it's possible. You could have it. Um, and if you don't run parallels on your Mac, if you see any files that are .exe files, those won't run. So you might as well delete them anyway. Um, but .dmg files, well, this is a perfect example. This is the, essentially, it's the disk image version of App Cleaner. So once you've installed the software, you don't need this anymore. So you can just trash it. Okay. And I'll give you a little trick here. Anytime you want to send a file directly to the trash without having to drag and drop it into that trash can, there's a fast way to do it. Command delete. Whoosh. Straight to the trash. Good little trick. Next one here is iTunes. Okay. And there's, there's two different ways to do this and I'll give you both. So if you have duplicates in iTunes, okay, one thing you should be aware of, by the way, can I just say how much I hate iTunes right now? Uh, dear Apple, you want the perfect business plan? Roll back iTunes to the way it was two versions ago. Just my opinion. Go here to View at the top. Go to Show Duplicate Items. Very, very simple. Now, you have to be a little bit careful when you're going through and removing duplicates. Here's why. Uh, let's look at an example here. Uh, let's look at Burning Bridges here by One Republic. Great little song, by the way. Uh, so... They may look seemingly identical, but look at the time. These are different versions of the same song. One is 4 minutes 18 seconds. The other is 4 minutes 36 seconds long. Be very careful when you're cleaning out duplicates that that is something you pay attention to, is the length, not just the title. The other part is this right here, bit rate. So if you didn't know, the higher the bit rate, essentially the clearer the audio. Okay, So anything that's 128 these days, eh, it's not going to sound too good. 320, awesome. Okay, and a lot of times you'll see 256 too. So in the case of, uh, just pretend these are the same length. Okay, this is a, f a ringtone I created for another class. So let's say Some Nights by Fun, Nate Roos. Uh, let's say these are the exact same file, but one version is 256 kilobits per second, the other is 320. Okay, my recommendation is kill the version that's smaller. Okay, kill the lower bit rate. You want high quality audio, hopefully. So I take that version and just hit the delete key on your keyboard. That's it. They'll say, are you sure you want to delete it? Yep. Move straight to trash. 
Now, if you have other types of duplicates on your computer, there is a piece of software that I'll give you a little recommendation to, and I would just want to give you a little disclaimer here. The company that makes this piece of software, I am not giving an endorsement to them, okay? For this particular piece of software, it's decent. For other pieces of software that they make, I tend to tell people to stay away from. So that's, you know, you can read the lawyer language right there. Apple icon, App Store. The name of the app is Gemini, and let's see if I can actually spell it. Hey, I did. Fantastic. Gemini, it is $10. Gemini, the duplicate finder. I don't really get the symbol here. I don't know. Is that maybe the astrological symbol for Gemini? I don't know. I'm a cancer. I just had my birthday. Anyway, so you can buy this. It'll go through to search for duplicate files. The other thing that is nice about it is that you can use this with external hard drives. Okay, so you can tell it to analyze files on an external hard drive, look for duplicates. It's pretty simple. And as you can see here, they do have a very, very high rating for this product. Not endorsing their other products, just this one, Gemini. Next one we're going over here uh, is actually just a little trick. I don't know how many of you here, maybe if you want to give me a quick yes in the um, chat. By the way, thank you to all of you who just wished me a happy birthday. Um, how many people here have trouble with like running out of space on their Mac? You can go ahead and type in yes, and I'll just kind of gauge it and see how popular the answer is. So I, I recently went into our little web store, and I added a couple of really cool gadgets for you guys. And just so that you all know, the way our web store works is it redirects you to Amazon. I'm just simply tagging products for you. You can buy it on your own. Um, I do appreciate it if you go through the store, though, because we get credit for it. Same price as going on Amazon, but we get credit. So go to pcclassesonline.com. Go to the little store tab right here. And let's see how many people said yes. Woo, that's a lot of yeses. Go into the store, scroll down a little bit. We've really simplified this. We took out the images. We're just giving you the, the real data here. Under the category of CD, DVD, Blu-ray writers, and flash drives. Uh, we should probably even almost consider putting this other category, but I don't even really know what to call it. These last three items here are really cool. By the way, I would say I would call this one a favorite as well. So um, these are perfect for those of you with either a laptop. It also does work with an iMac. The difference is that iMacs don't have as much storage as the laptops these days. So um, it's more useful typically to laptop owners. So these are three different types of the same device. Be very, very careful when you order because they are different sizes for different computers. Meaning there's one that's designed for a 15-inch MacBook Pro and another that's designed for a 13-inch MacBook Pro or MacBook Air. So let me just show you this one here for an example. And by the way, we have the ability to buy it in the USA, Canadian, or UK versions of Amazon. Eventually, we'll be adding the others as well, or some of the others. So check this little puppy out. This is about the size of your thumbnail, okay? And you know that little SD card slot on your Mac? This fits flush inside it. So you have built in, you can basically double if you have a 256 gigabit, gigabyte storage on your MacBook Air, you can double it with this little trick. And it's not expensive. You know, $168 for 256 gigs of flash storage, that, that's not bad, trust me. You should see what I paid for my laptop. Um, so this just sits flush in your computer and you can offload files to it. Be very careful with this, okay? You wanna make sure that you still have a backup um, one of the things I love about these little devices is that they are practically indestructible. Um, the story that I've always told over the years is that um, the one that I use, which is actually this one right here, um, although, sorry, it didn't actually happen to this one. Um, I had a flash drive once that fell out of my pocket. I was getting into my car. I had a, at the time, I had a pretty low car. Fell out of my pocket, fell into a puddle. It was there for several days in a puddle. It was fine. No problem. These things can survive just about anything, um, so they're they're really, really well built. Um, by the way, I have a 13-inch MacBook Air. This does stick out a little bit, okay? Actually, yeah, about that much. Um, so maybe a little less than that. I don't know. But um, these are really, really cool, cute little ways to just add a little bit of storage to your Mac. And, like, look at this one, 70 bucks. That's nothing. So if you're looking for a little way to add some extra storage, you can check those out. The other thing, and I have to make a, a mention, today's date, by the way, June 27th, 2015. As of today's date, Apple Music is not yet out. Yours truly is very excited for Apple Music. The reason being is it means that you will essentially, if you subscribe, be able to remove everything from your computer. 
as far as music goes because you'll just be able to play it off the internet. Now, if you don't have an internet connection, you won't be able to do that, so maybe don't get rid of everything, but it does mean that for a lot of us who are low on storage, you may have the ability to get back a lot of storage. And of course, they came out with that announcement like a week before I signed up for Spotify, which by the way, I am loving, but I do suspect I will like Apple Music better just because of the interface in the iPhone version. Not Still not a fan of the Apple version, the uh, Mac version, but anyways, that's that. I want to give a quick shout out to another video that we are going to be producing. I just have to look into the best method for how to uh, get all these things to, to work well. So we have a video that we're going to be doing on how to clear out what is referred to as other data on your iPhone and iPad. Check our website for that video soon. Um, one of the big ones that I'm trying to find a good solution for how to help is I didn't even realize how big your calendar data can be, especially if you've been using a calendar over time. Even though I'm a busy guy, you know, I, I, I didn't realize it was as huge as it was. So what I'm looking for right now is a way to tell it, hey, if an event is this old or older, I could have phrased that better, if it's a really old event, clear it out. So that way you only have maybe the last year of events in your calendar. Still looking for a way to do that, but stay tuned to our website for tips and tricks on that. What I'm going to do right now is the folks who are here live, I'm going to answer their questions. For those of you who have been tuning in via our website, via YouTube, please check out our YouTube channel. You can subscribe by clicking on the button that just appeared on your screen now. Otherwise, we will see you soon. Thank you for watching. Hit that little like button too, by the way. This is David A. Cox with PC Classes Online. Class dismissed.